thought I'd talk to you a little bit about helmets. Because here I have the helmet that I normally wear when I'm working. And uh, this is a, a helmet I bought. Um, Maverick issues helmets to you when you join up and you are an employee. Uh, but I found that um, I kind of wanted to get one with a different harness system than the one they had. This is a pretty good helmet actually. This is an MSA High Viz V Guard. The V Guard would be this V shaped thing here. And it does have some vents, and I kind of like that idea. What I really liked about this helmet was the harness. Um, it holds in from the front, and then you can dial in and tighten the back with this control knob, uh, which I thought I liked a lot. So I could put it on, and then I can dial it tighter. It kind of sits, this thing sits low enough that it kind of holds it on your head, but it will not stay on your head if you do this without any kind of a chin strap. Okay. So, I mean, if you're serious about it staying on your head, and you're walking around and, you know, this and that and the other, but I have actually, if I've been in a situation where, say, I didn't put my chin strap down, I forgot, you know, spaced it, and you're throwing a strap, your helmet can fly off just in the action of doing that. That's not good. You don't want your helmet coming off. So, um, with the chin strap. Okay, and this, I've been using this. I like it. You can see I, I've mounted on the front a, a mount for the light I had, which was a very inexpensive light, and it does the job, but it, I have it off of there right now, but um, it can go on and off. The chin strap, which is pretty gnarly looking, is the weak point of this helmet, and of almost every helmet that I've seen that is a typical construction helmet like this. Uh, this is one of the better ones that's out there as far as that goes. It, its weak point is this. It hooks on with this little hook. Let me see if I can disconnect this and show it to you. It hooks on to that with this little hook that is made of plastic and it's thin plastic. Um, the first time your head bounces on the ground, this will break. The second time your head bounces on the ground, your helmet won't be on your head. Oh, I, I don't really like that. This it falls off when you don't want it to, and it, it it's even worse on some of the other helmets I've had and I've tried this with. I decided I wanted to do a little research and find something better. Here, I have a Petzl. I bought this helmet and I thought I'm gonna try it. I looked at what they had on their website and I was really impressed. And what drew me to them was that I had one of their headlights. And it's in the truck actually. I kept it and it's one I have with the strap still on it. So I don't really you don't see me getting it out much, but I have it kind of as a backup for a while. But I decided that I wanted to up the game headlight wise and helmet wise. So this is what I got. This is the Vertex Vent, which, and it comes with a little pamphlet. If I take it out, set that over here. Pencil as a company is, they're really into safety gear. They make uh, two kinds of gear they make industrial gear and then they make like sport gear. Sport gear is like caving helmets, um, climbing helmets, rock climbers use them, that kind of gear. They make uh, a lot of lighting for specialized activities, mainly headlights. Uh, this is their industrial helmet. They make about four or five models and they had different colors. And what drew me to this one was that it had um, adjustable vents that open and close. And you know that with a helmet, ventilation in the summer is so critical. And in the winter time, what I usually do is I wear this hat, which is like a very thin, um, you know, just a stocking cap, and it just works great. I like wearing my helmet in the winter because it keeps my head warm, and it's the right amount of, uh, of everything. So I kind of like this. In the very top, it has a foam piece then it has a suspension which is fairly similar to this suspension over here. 
you know, the webbing. The nice thing is that on the front they have this removable foam and they have an extra set they gave you which is thicker which I don't think I need because I've got a pretty big head and this adjusts and the adjustment for this is by two wheels on the side and what these wheels do is when you adjust them it moves in the front and the back at the same time it doesn't just move the back in if you ever seen somebody wearing a helmet and they have a really small head and their helmet's like sticking off way off the back, you know, um, this is really a step up in that regard. The one thing that the really drew me to it though was this. This is how a helmet should attach if you really want to be safe. You know, the webbing it goes down. It's like a, it, it's a lot like a bicycling helmet. Uh, in that way. The downside, it does not have a real brim here, which I kind of miss a little bit. I kind of like that brim because it keeps rain. When it's raining, it helps keep it off my glasses better. I'm going to see how that works. Okay. So uh, when it goes on, I, when I first put it on, I, said, I called my wife over and I, I was excited, obviously, and I said, hey, uh, what's the dork factor on this <laughs> you know but then we both decided that um, let's face it I'm doing a job the dork factor of a hard hat is pretty high already I know a lot of guys like to wear them and they kind of perch them on their head and you know they got to have that look that they that, uh, you know they they look like you know they're they're really badass you know that way but this um, I can adjust it now and it pulls in and tight and there's no way this is coming off my head I can fall off anything and it's going to provide side it's type 1 and type type 1 is a, a hit from the top and a type 2 is a hit from the side it covers both of those really well so I kind of like this I'll let you know I'm gonna be wearing it now they had colors you could get um, I think that this is the best color for being seen. You know, this high vis yellow, which is uh, is out there. So, um, so this is a helmet that I really like. Um, it has uh, you can actually get um, like ear muff kind of things to go on it. You know, and it has a face shield that you can get on it. And they showed it like it's like a you know the face shields that you see football players have you know kind of like thing and i imagine it's like having safety glasses i didn't get that because it was expensive and i thought i'm just gonna scratch it up and be nasty i got safety glasses at a prescription i'll just wear those so so that is what i got now let me set this aside for a minute because i want to show you something else when i was doing it i ordered two I ordered also their model called the Elvio Vent. This is the Vertex. This is the Elvio Vent. And they're really different. And I looked and looked at the website. I looked at their videos. And I thought, which one do I want to go with? They're very similar um, in a lot of ways. Um, it was really hard to choose and I thought well I can always send one back but you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna keep them both yeah because after looking at them I decided that the this the vent they're shaped slightly different you see this one has a little bit more of a, a peak right back here this one has these vents these vents are not closable though the biggest difference in these helmets is that this one has a large foam Pad covering all the way down the sides in the center here so that is a real nice crush zone this is actually a very very nice helmet that way when I weigh them you know this one here the Elvio is much lighter and I think 
Not sure what accounts for that. It might be just the shell itself is a little bit thinner, you know. They both have the same brow thing, and so they both came with a packet with an extra thick piece that are pretty much interchangeable, which I think is nice. And of course, it came with its own little booklet. Um, it has the webbing for the chin strap is thinner in diameter. They talked about this helmet, the Elvio, is being more of a mountain rescue helmet, a, uh, a helmet that you would wear if you were medical personnel going in to rescue somebody in a really bad place and weight was a real consideration. So it is very, very nice on your head that way. It has the same closing system as the other one where it has the wheels, you know, that, that go. And uh, I like that. Both of these I can wear winter and summer because they will work with my hat just fine. So I like that. Um, the, the actual little clasp on this one is different. Each, they have two different clasps. Um, and I don't know which one I like better. I think when I first put them on, they were both hard to do, but you get used to it, I think. So I'm kind of excited about that. Here we have the LPO. I wish this was the high vis yellow. They didn't seem to offer it in that. They had it in a couple of the colors, but they didn't have it in this color. I think this color's better. This is more like, you know, like when I look at the, my, my three helmets, the orange is, you know, this is more on par with the orange as far as it's showing. You know, you're going to be seen. This one's a whole step up from either of them. So that was fun. I, I, I'm going to be wearing these and, uh, and check them out. But let me show you what else I bought. A Pixel Pixa 3. They have Pixa 1, 2, and 3. They, they make a lot of lights. They make very inexpensive ones and they make really, really fancy ones. Rechargeable batteries and all that. Some that had the batteries pack on the helmet and all that stuff. The Pixa, the, this line is their industrial line. It's explosion proof. <laughs> if I walked in an area where there were volatile fumes that could explode, this would not, would not set them off. I don't think that's a big factor. But what I drew me to this light is that it is extremely durable. And it's actually heavier than, almost heavier than the helmets. It has a way of folding. It folds when you're not using it. You fold it in against itself like that and then it won't go on. And it protects the lens. And you, obviously it swivels. This is the Pixa 3 though, and you can see the nice thing about this, it hooks on the front of my helmet very easily. And then I can turn it on. This knob, it has three settings. I have a general floodlight. I have a floodlight with a um, spotlight, so if I'm walking, it illuminates around me evenly and far ahead, and then it has just the spotlight. So, um, this is like the nice one. I thought I was getting the two, which was a little less expensive. I guess I went overboard a little bit. Um, the color of it matches this helmet really well. It's slightly, actually slightly different. This is the kind of light that what I like about this light is I don't have to leave it on my helmet all the time because it comes off so easily. And then I can take it and stash it and it'll be protected and work really well. It's crush proof to, you know, I don't know what they said. Uh, you can run over it with your car, basically. And it's waterproof. You can take it underwater. I can take it in the sink and scrub it with a toothbrush. That one of the coolest things is this. The lumens, they stay constant. 
until the battery almost drains and then they go off into emergency mode instead of like a lot of batteries you know things they drain instead of going down slowly and getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer this will hold its uh, its light for a long time it takes two AA batteries and uh, so that's the exciting news so tomorrow when I go and load bar tomorrow morning I will be sporting it won't be dark so I won't have that on there but I will be sporting my vertex and my um, Pixa Haslock Pixa 3 light will be handy. So this is the Petzl stuff. I'll give you a report. Um, oh yeah, also it came with a headband. If you want to move it that way, you can. I can put it on here. I think I have to slip off the helmet mount and then it goes on there and it slips in here. And what's really kind of curious is I have my other Petzl light that's in the truck on the headband. And it's just their sport mode. It probably costs 20 bucks, 25 bucks, maybe less. And I'm wondering if maybe um, it will fit in this and I could always use it on my helmet as a backup because it's the same company. So I would imagine all their lights do that. I hope you, uh, I hope you look after your noggin if you're out there driving. All the companies like Maverick, they're real big on safety. And if you show up at a shipper or a receiver and you don't wear your personal protection equipment, you know, and I see a lot of drivers from a lot of companies when I go places, they wear it if they have to. But when they're up on their trailer and I see them and they aren't covering their noggin at all, you know, no helmet, it doesn't take much of a call, fall to, to cause real issues. But it's a serious thing. Um, the companies do it. They do it for us, you know. They want us to be safe. And they also do it for the insurance companies. The insurance companies require it. And I think that uh, they have reason to. They look at the numbers. They see what happens when people have accidents. You know, in the end, you're responsible for your head. You're responsible for being safe. It's like you're responsible for not getting frostbite out there. You're responsible for staying dry, you know, how you secure your load and everything. And I think if you approach it seriously, it's a good thing. Um, so it's like I wear boots. I don't wear sneakers, you know. It's, what happens if something falls in your foot and you hit something, you know. It's all the same thing. So be safe. Wear the protection gear. That's what it's for. It's protecting you. You.